Hi guys, um, in this video we're going to learn about the bias variance trade-off. This is a dilemma that is really important in, in machine learning and it basically means that well both bias and variance are components of, are two components of the test error of the error we make when we predict on new data, the error we want to minimize. So in principle, we'd we would like to minimize both the, bi the bias and the variance. But this is not going to be possible because if we, what we're going to learn in this video is that if we want to reduce the variance, it's going to be at the expense of increasing the bias. And if we want to reduce the bias, it's going to be at the expense of, of increasing the variance. And that, that hopefully is what we're going to understand well in, in this video. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that our input, we have an input that we call X and an output that we call Y. And the relationship between this input and this output, we're going to model it like this. We're going to say that this is the underlying process that relates the inputs with the outputs. And basically the output is a deterministic function of the input, this function F, plus a random component, a random component that has mean zero and, and we're going to assume that constant variance uh, sigma square. So basically what we're doing is that we, if we have a sample of data points like, like the crosses here, each of these has been generated by, by a certain deterministic function f which is plotted here as the black line and then so for this input for instance we would have the value of f of x plus a random component which is this epsilon here okay and what we're going to study in this video is the error we make when we want to predict the value uh, the output value the y corresponding to a certain input x zero and we're gonna measure that error as the as the quadratic error the difference between the output and our estimation for that input x zero okay it's our estimation because if, if you look closely here there, there's a hat and that means that this is our estimation of 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 f of x zero okay so what we're gonna do is to decompose this error in three terms. This is something you, you can do it uh, slowly at home, but here we're, we're going to assume that, that we've already done it. And if you do it, you can prove that you can decompose this error, the error we, we're going to make on average when predicting on x0, on these three different components. The first component is sigma square. And this is called the irreducible error. Why is it the irreducible error? Because the best, the best prediction we could give is f of x. That is the best we can aim for. And if we predict it with f of x, which we don't know, but imagine we, we knew that, that would be the best prediction we could, we could have. The error we would make in the expected quadratic error would be precisely sigma square because that's the variance of the random component that that we cannot predict so that is why we call this the reducible error and we we have it due to the noise epsilon and there's no way we we can have a, an error a prediction error lower than this and then we've got these two components and th these are the bias and the variance. And if you look here, they're expected values. So we're going to talk about expected values. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say several times things like expected and on average. And what, what, what do we mean by that? What I want you to imagine is that we have different training sets. We've got a set of training sets each of them of, I mean, equally good, of equal size, of equal quality, if you like. They come from the same underlying process, but we've got different uh, training sets. And when, I'm, when I will be talking about, on average, what I mean is that we're going to 
fit. You, you can imagine that we're going to fit our model with each of these training sets. So we're going to have different fitted models, right? And each of these fitted models is going to give us a different estimate for x of zero. So when I talk about the our estimate on average, I'm talking about the average of these different estimates that have been provided by different fitted models that each of them was using a different training set. That, that is what we're going to talk about. So what is the bias? The bias is the amount by which the average of our estimates using these different training sets differs from the true mean of the process, which is also the best estimation that we could give. The true mean is f of x0. So the bias is on average how much our estimations uh, differ from the true mean. And this bias is mainly usually uh, due to having a model that is too rigid. Because if, if you think about it, it means that we're making a systematic error. On average, we're, we're, we're predicting badly, basically. We're predicting badly and, and we could fix it because we have a systematic error, but we can't because the model is, is too, too rigid. The variance, on the other hand, is, is a completely different thing. For the variance, we don't need to know anything about the underlying process. The variance is a property of our estimates. We're only looking at our est estimates. So we saw that we have different fitted models, each of them fitted with a different training data set. And each of these models is going to give us a different estimate, a different prediction. And the variance is the variance of these predictions. How, how much these predictions vary around their mean. It's actually the variance of the estimates. Okay? And this is due usually to having a model that is too flexible. When the model is too flexible and can adapt very well to different training data sets, then it's capturing part of this random component of each of these training data sets. And this random component, because it is random, is different in each of these data sets. And, and basically, when you have a model that is too flexible, this is capturing this random component, and therefore the estimates are going to be very different with, of, of all these different models. And that is basically the, 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 the variance. Let's explore a little bit more this, this issue with, with an example. Okay, so this is a training set, and I'm gonna change it now. This would be another training set. So the only thing that is changing here is the, the, the F is the same, but what is changing is the realization of the random component, okay? And what we're going to do is to fit a very simple model to this training set. And that would be a linear model, and we would get this, this estimation. This is our fitted model, fitted with this training set. And if you do the same with another training set, you would get another linear uh, fit. It would be very similar, you, you would guess, because it's, it's a very simple model, but still a different, a different model. And if you think about what would happen if we did this for different training sets, for each of them, we would be getting a different line, but these lines, since the model is too rigid, is too simple for this, probably wouldn't vary much. And all of them would be giving us a pretty bad estimate for, for x0. So they differ very little among them, and they're all pretty bad, okay? So let, let's look at this. So basically, we're fitting for different training sets and, and we're getting different f hat i here. So we would have, for instance, f1 with the hat. That would be a, 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 um, a blue line in, in clear, in, in, in light blue. And this would be f2. That would be another 
line in light blue and these lines would differ very little and we could also look at the expected value of our estimations for a certain and that is what is represented with the thick dark blue okay the expected value of our estimations for a certain x0 we would have several estimates and we would have the expected value of those estimates which would be exactly here at the at the thick dark blue line and what we see is that if we have a simple model the difference between the average of our estimations and the true mean of the process which is f of x0 is really high that's the bias okay we're making a systematic error here we're making a systematic error on the other hand the variance of our estimations how much each of these f i of x0 um, differ is is very little they're, they're they're all pretty similar so we have low variance if we do the same with a much more flexible model what we would be getting is a much closer fit to the training data because the model is much more flexible it has many more degrees of freedom and if we do this for another training um, training data set we would get a completely different model why completely different model because these models are very flexible and they can adapt very well to the training set and they can learn the random component of, of this uh, of this process okay and what we would get in the end um, is different fits different again fi with with the hat and and also an average of these different fits okay that is represented as the thick dark red line okay and what we can see here is that actually the average of our predictions which is here at the dark red line would be very close very close to the true mean of the process so so basically on, on average we're doing pretty good we're doing really good actually but the problem is that we're not doing things on average when we uh, go out and build a model we just have a training data set and we provide a prediction just one prediction and that could be up here which is the prediction that we obtain with f1 hat or down here and both of them are pretty bad and and they differ a lot so these models these models have very low bias because on average they're doing really good but on the other hand they have very high variance very high variance because all these different estimates that are coming from different models trained with different training data sets would give us a very different prediction a very different prediction because each of them is capturing the noise in in their particular training training set okay so so this is this is not not good either what you can see here as well is that by increasing the size of the training set we are able to lower the variance and and therefore we're, we're less likely to 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 have overfitting to overfit the the data so to sum to sum up this trade-off between bias and variance means that I, I imagine we have a, a model that is that is too simple okay that that would have a lot of bias and and very little variance and we would like to to decrease the bias the bias of this model uh, because this model is not sensitive enough to to the data we we want the model to adapt better to the data so it can learn the relationship between the inputs and the outputs how do we do that well by increasing the flexibility of this model like by adding degrees of freedom by and by doing that okay we, we're doing good we're making the model more flexible and therefore uh, the bias is going to lower but precisely because we're making the model more flexible then the variance is going to to increase because by making the model more flexible the model is able to adapt better to be more sensitive to the training set and at some point it will become too sensitive it will be capturing part of this random component part of this noise and then and then we 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 would be um, starting to get 
too much variance, okay? So the idea here is that if you want to reduce the bias, it's going to be at the expense of increasing the, the variance and the other way around. If you want to reduce the, the variance, it's going to be what you want is to make your model less sensitive to the data. And by doing that, you're going to increase the bias. This is a central problem in all supervised learning. This is a key problem in, in machine learning. Models with high bias are intuitively simple models. They're, they're not very flexible and they tend to overfit. On the other hand, models with high variance are models that are usually very flexible. They can adapt very well. And because they can adapt very well, they can capture part of the noise in the particular training set that we have. And we don't want that. That will, that will make our model more likely to overfit the, the, the data. Okay, so this is basically the bias variance dilemma, and I hope it's reasonably clear. And we'll I'll I'll see you on on the next video. Okay, thanks thanks a lot for watching. See you later, guys.